Well, if you were English, you'd have a naughty thought on that. Maybe you do anyway, but it's not what you think. It was literally in the studio, a knob went. Hey, this is Josh Bernstein. We're so honored to invite our next guest to the show. He's a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. He's one of Rolling Stone's top 100 guitarists of all time. Most importantly, he's he's a heartbreaker. Mr. Mike Campbell, welcome to the Power Hello, House. Hello, guys. How you doing? Hi, Matt. You know, Mike, I was really happy that before we started, you mentioned that you watched the show a few times. You really liked it. So that meant a lot to us. Oh, cool. Said, yeah, I like it. Mike, it's amazing. So Dirty Knobs you've been out with. Um, I mean, you really started it, I think, close to 11 years ago. But then, you know, around 2020, you know, started making records and working, doing some stuff with George Draculius. I, I got to tell you, with Dirty Knobs, you have this song that I love. And I'm allowed to say this on the air. It's called that guy so can you tell me about who is that guy and i wanted to know like more about that song because i just it's an expression that you say especially when it's somebody who's wronged you or you know you know what i'm talking about at least once or twice a day right and yes sometimes exactly you look at the tv when you say it i gotta give credit for the title to chris stapleton uh he came out a while ago before that album to do some writing with me and we were working on some stuff and he goes, I got this title, but I don't think it's, I can do it. And I said, what is it? He says, call that guy. <laughs> and he go, oh man, I, I say that every day, you know, somebody in traffic or somebody on the TV, not naming any names. I said, well, can I have a go out? And he said, sure. So I, I wrote the rest of the song and uh, sent it to him. He made one little political change in one of the verses, which we won't go into, <laughs> but, uh, it's it's fun to play live because everybody relates to it. You know, I think in, uh, you know, being a native New Yorker, I'll tell you that this guy is, is actually a term of endearment uh, in, in, yeah. in, the, in the East Coast. So it could be seen. I think uh, you know the song could be interpreted in many different ways. Oh, good, good. I didn't know that, but I'm glad to hear that. For example, Matt Pin Matt Pinfield, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> What I mean is, I love I love Matt, and that's hey, f all you guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, f Every one of us. Yeah. But I, I also thank have you. to ask you, Mike, how on earth did you come up with that name? Because it feels wrong even just saying oh, what? it. Oh, You gotta dirty. say it. Say it. The dirty knobs. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you were English, you'd have a naughty thought on that. Maybe you do anyway, but it's not what you think. It was literally in the studio. A knob went. And somebody said, that's a dirty knob. And I said, well, we'll be the dirty knobs. As it turns out, it's English slang for something else. But that's in your mind. I just like the sound of it. And our band is kind of dirty and grimy and gritty. So it's stuck. Now, Mike, you know, you famously, obviously, incredible member of the Heartbreakers for so long. Previous to that, you know, you and Tom formed the band Mudcrutch. Uh, in the you know late 60s, early 70s. Uh, but you know, it's funny, I was reading about you. you. You eventually got to sort of play with every one of your, I would think your childhood idols, right? Roy Orbison, Johnny Cash, uh, Bob Dylan. What's it like for you, someone who grew up, you know, sort of at the birth of rock and roll to get to play alongside some of these incredible, you know, some of your idols? You know, it's hard to believe, it really is. I feel so, uh, so much gratitude that those kind of dreams, and they weren't even dreams of mine that that could ever happen, you know, but uh, I have met a lot of my idols and been able to work with them and have them tell me that they like my playing. And uh, it's kind of even hard to compute it. I, I can't believe it's happened to me. I've just had a very charmed life. It's amazing coming from Gainesville like you did. And I got to say, one of my favorite memories that when I was in high school, about 19, you know, in the late 1970s, you guys were touring for your second album, You're Gonna Get It. And I was so in love with the first two records, I bought a row of tickets for $4 to play. Bless you. Yeah, That's the so New York cool. Palladium. Yeah, I was like, you gotta hear this band. So I was turning everybody onto the first Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers album. I'm still living off that money, by the way. <laughs> $4, it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was the one thing that I noticed we unified everybody in the school. It didn't matter whether you were like, I mean, the punk thing really hadn't happened in high school yet, but there were people that were into all different things. And I didn't care if they were into the Grateful Dead or metal. The one thing they could agree on, everybody that I turned the band on to was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. It's amazing. Well, that is, yeah. We, they, they, we did get lumped in as a punk band for a while, but uh, we survived all that. I think the reason you got labeled punk by accident is because I owned a record when I was a little kid called Chipmunk Punk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the album was Chipmunks. And 
your guy, you guys were, you were right on there. So I think it's, I think I want to blame Alvin and the Chipmunks for mislabeling you guys. They did Refugee, <laughs> right? On that record? I believe they did Refugee, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you something about the, the punk label. You know, Tom was so, so quick witted. And he would, around that time, I think it was called 1977, and we went to England, and it was the Ramones and Sex Pistols and all that stuff was going on. And they kind of thought we were in that vein. And he did an interview once, and they said, So, so you guys are a punk band? And he said, you call me a punk, I'll cut you. <laughs> and then they the said, you, just they said, you can interpret yeah. that any way you want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, uh, one of my favorite um, things you've done, is, like I mentioned earlier, was uh, you know later in Johnny Cash's career, you, you played on all those incredible records that he produced with Rick Rubin. And you know, is there any takeaways or memories of working with Johnny Cash you could kind of share with us? Well, I've got so many memories. Johnny was a huge... Uh, Hero of mine and my dad used to play his records. Him and Elvis was all I heard around the house. Maybe Buddy Holly every now and then, but Johnny was was uh, definitely uh, a heavy influence on me. And I asked my dad once, why do you listen to Johnny Cash so much? And he says, because he sings about the truth. Another thing we got to ask you about, Mike, I want to uh, ask you about Running Down a Dream because it's such a great song and I know that. Thank uh, you. You, know, you co-wrote that song, it's a classic. Talk to me about coming up with that great riff? You know, it was just something that came to me one night. I had been out to see a band, uh, Jane's Addiction actually. I'd gone to see them with my wife and I liked their groove and their, their kind of riff approach to uh, songs. And I went home that night and just, it's all in one string, down, 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 you know? And I didn't think much about it. I gave it to Tom and he called me back a few weeks later and said, well, Jeff and I have been listening to that riff and we think we have a song to go with it, you know? Said, All right, let's hear it, you know? And that was the song. That's amazing. I love knowing now that Running Down a Dream was inspired by a Jane's Addiction show. That's great. That's That's well, you know, songs come from all places and inspiration can happen at any moment. And I, I would give them credit for inspiring the energy on that, yeah. Absolutely, that's fantastic, Mike. You know, Matt and I, we had the pleasure last year, we got to watch you perform at Bourbon and Beyond um, down at Louisville, and you know, you did such a fantastic set, and uh, I also had the pleasure, I used to help produce the Mountain Jam Festival where you and Tom played, um, you know, uh, I think that, la that last summer, 2019. So just wanna say thank you so much. It's such an honor that you joined us here on the Power Hour. Uh, thank you so much, best of luck, and can't wait to see you out there with the Dirty Knobs. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike Campbell. Thank you so much. Goodbye, keep rocking. Hey there, thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know, just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is, or who your favorite bands are, and what artists you're into, or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you, that's the point, all right? Keep it coming.